Hey everybody, Pastor Boyle here from Revival Baptist Church. I got a couple guys here, Brother Greg Cameron, Brother Scott Campbell. And we just wanted to kind of make a quick video and discuss some things uh, about the coronavirus. I've already put out a video about how we shouldn't have the spirit of fear and uh, we should just go on and do great things. But at the same time, it doesn't hurt to stop and look into some of the scares and the headlines and think, is there an underlining agenda? And I think that when you look into it, you'll see that there could possibly be uh, uh, ulterior motives to some of the pandemic and scare that's going on. And uh, Psalms 33, the Bible says in verse 10, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generation. And what that's saying is that the heathen do scheme, they devise mischief, they have their plans, but if it's not God's time, he brings it to naught. And there's many times where the world had plans and God destroyed those plans. But that tells me they're scheming going on. Uh, scheming or devising would be conspiracies. And uh, so with all this, you know, is the coronavirus real? I believe it's real. I think there is an actual virus. But is it deserving the hype that it's getting? And I would say no. And I would say why are we... Uh, fear-mongering the people what is it that they're trying to produce and we're only guessing we're going to speculate a few things um, obviously we at the end of the day they can scheme all they want my trust is in the Lord and uh, which made heaven and earth and so but it, I think it'd be a healthy discussion just to kind of see you know what people are thinking and what the world may try to introduce because of this coronavirus so brother Greg I'm gonna let you start off what do you see connecting some dots? What do you think this could produce? Okay. Um, well, we know that there's the rulers of the darkness of this world. We know that we're not supposed to be ignorant of his devices. And we know there's there's always something going on. You know, Christians sleep. The devil doesn't. So he's always got something going on. God's got his time. And probably one of the biggest things that I see, the, the main thing that I see is that all of this is going to end up turning into nothing at the end of the day everyone's going to go back home and open up their doors and go back to work and look at their pile of toilet paper and wonder what they're going to do <laughs> and then they're going to be happy because the pandemic's over right and the government is going to come out with a big s on their chest like they were the we're the heroes of the day you obeyed us and we saved right. the day so that's going to let people feel more comfortable about letting the government have more authority and say, well, yeah, this was a huge deal. I, I, almost, I could have died, but the government swooped in yeah. and saved the day. So I think they're going to use this. They already probably know it's a nothing burger. They already know that nothing's really going to come of it. Of course, there's an illness, there's a sickness, but at the end of the day, they're going to say, look at what we did. Trust us. We've mm -hmm. got right. you. Right. I think it reminds, <clears throat> it reminds me of what I think it was Nancy Pelosi said when she passed the bill. And she says the key words of this bill are testing, testing, testing. Now, what she meant was the get tested quickly. But I think it was exactly what it said. Right. We're testing, testing, testing. And I think the American people are failing, failing, failing. Right. Now, I'm not saying in some states where there's hot spots and that you need to take precautionary measures, you know. But as a whole, you got states like Florida that have 0.000014% of the population even affected by it. And you got 100% of, of the people in a pandemic, in fear. I mean, any Walmart, counties that don't even have a report of anything, their Walmart shelves are bare. Yeah. And so I think you, you, you might be onto something there that it's just a test. And in the big events of end times, it'll actually be a real virus or a real, uh, a lethal virus, I should say. But Yeah, and it, 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 this very well could be a real virus, a real right. lethal virus. It's in the early stages. But the point is, is that, you know, if you observe the media and you observe politics over time in the history, even in recent history, they don't let a good tragedy go to waste. Right. See, you know, at, at the time of 9-11, the same, the same spirit was over the entire nation, you know, a lot, many, many parts of the world, the same spirit of fear. And so this may not be of the same magnitude but still, there will, there will be some profit for the rulers of the darkness of this world, mm -hmm. that spiritual wickedness in high places, where they can test some things out. They can, oh, for one, for me, the most obvious 
is how strong the media has become. Right. Because this whole scenario, you know, I believe that it's a real scenario, but you know, when you talk to people, the numbers are small. You don't have very many people that actually know anybody directly affected by this virus. And yet, like you said, it seems like 100% of people are scared to death of this thing mm -hmm. that may not even really exist although i believe it does but it doesn't right. the point is is that it didn't even that didn't even have to be real right it, except the media tell you that this is something you need to be scared of you need to shut your business down so who's really become the authority on information right it's the media right. it's no longer people thinking for themselves or making judgment for themselves but rather confiding in a media source mm -hmm. to guide them and direct all the decisions that they make in their life it could be, it could be like the 9/11 of healthcare. In 9 after 9/11, everybody was in a fear. But I would say, now I would, I would have been a lot younger. But I was, you know, married and uh, in my adult life when it happened, and it wasn't near the, the outcry that we're seeing over this. But it did create a, an opportunity for the government to roll out the Patriot Act. Right. right. And out of this, glo this nationwide fear, now we've got government so large it'll never be reduced they can do surveillance indefinite detention i mean there's just a lot of liberties we lost that we're never getting back yeah and it's a chain right because and it's a progression because as they make progress in that area there's no going backward right they've well, added to their mechanism. so what does the coronavirus what opportunity does the coronavirus present that the government will then take those steps and then never give them back. One fear that I think we all have, and that is forced vaccinations. Right. You know, once they come up with the cure, are they gonna force everybody to line up and take those vaccinations? Yeah, I think that's a huge possibility. I mean, and really to me, when it comes down to it, it's you always look back to the dollar. Right. Where's the dollar going? We know there's money in vaccines. So, I mean, that's why they're trying so hard to get some. I mean, they got 20 different places coming together to try and work on this vaccine and who stands to benefit from that vaccine i mean if they do come up with a vaccine which we we obviously don't know that they don't work but people think they work so even if they come up with a vaccine by the time the vaccine's made and mass produced enough to be used <laughs> this pandemic's probably right. going to be over anyways but it's going to introduce the idea that look we all need to do this for humanity right well what, something that's interesting about vaccines is up to this point They've been, able, they've been able to make it mandatory for children to be put, placed on a schedule, right? And it's almost to the point where it's mandatory. I mean, if, if you were to want to put your child in the public school system, I think in almost every state, it's mandatory that your child be up to schedule uh, according to the state guidelines for that, that vaccine scheduling. But up to this point, I don't know of any, any states that uh, have made it mandatory or even have a schedule for for adults right right and so part of that part of that uh, you know that uh, society in general that paradigm and that perception is that vaccines are for the betterment of mankind so there's very few people out there that even have a bad uh, perspective or look upon vaccines in a bad light it, it, it most for the most part in general people think that vaccines are a good thing for society and a good thing for the overall general health of the world right so they'd be very open to it if you know f the for for the everyday person if their observation of the overall health of the world were to decline to a point where they would perceive it be necessary mm -hmm. then they would line up for them right right and i don't know if you're going to catch into the mic but just talk a little louder for the mic sake. okay but the, the other thought that I think as you had brought out earlier was the cashless society mm -hmm. where they're pushing everybody for online sales. I don't honestly think that that's the reason, but I think it is opportunity that they may take advantage of. And you, you were saying a few things if you want to bring that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So what I was thinking, just in my own mind, I was seeing some news reports about all these mega corporations that <clears throat> department stores and things like this that are closing down their businesses and then just making this huge push to get online sales, to get the ability to really put out a lot of product 
uh, to a lot of people, which they don't have the ability to do that right now. As we see, there's shortages of everything. People can't order anything. But they, I, I think they just want that market to be just cornered at this point because it, it cuts out a lot of the money that would go to the common person that's working a department store and doing all those things. So they're saving money on that. Well, we've already seen it at a lot of department stores where they, you know, everybody's checking their own stuff out. You know, you're ringing your own self up and paying your own thing, which is which fine and dandy or whatever. I really couldn't care less about that. But what it is ultimately going to come down to is don't touch the money. You got coronavirus, you know, so how, how can you keep money from filthy hands going to other hands? So you mean like they might admit that it's filthy lucre? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We could get them to admit the Bible's true at that point, right? And I, I, I think about whenever we have discussions like this i always think about where where the bible teaches us things are going to eventually end up you know what i mean and so in revelation 13 uh the bible talks about the beast the antichrist rising up right and eventually in revelation 13 7 it says and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So this Antichrist, he will sit atop of a global government. Right. And today we have sovereign nations. We have autonomous nations that govern themselves, you know, technically on paper. I believe that the world government is yet behind the scenes influencing that government, that supposedly autonomous government but yet today we still technically have autonomy whereas by the time we get to Revelation 13 where the Antichrist is has his seat and his power it's a one world government right so we have to we have to as Christians we have to observe the world and we have to understand that everything being separate today has to be consolidated by that point right. in time. Right. That's not going to happen overnight. So when we talk about all these tragic events and these things that happen on the magnitude of this, where now you can guarantee that there's going to be legislation that's going to be written specifically because of this pandemic epidemic, and it will be passed, where we have a crony capitalist system where any of the legislation that does go through Congress and gets passed, I believe is funded and paid for by global corporations that actually all that money gets funneled to the top where they then have the influence over the politicians and legislation and things like that. So the consolidation has already started to take place mm -hmm. where any of these events are another piece in the puzzle or another stepping stone, another step toward complete globalization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you think about it, what would normally take 10 years to accomplish right. can be accomplished yeah. very quickly in a situation like this. I mean, especially when you're shutting businesses down right. and you're, you know, then you can put all of your, I mean, you're, you're not, you don't have any stores open. Yeah. So all of your time and efforts can be placed into moving towards the future of, of this centralized, globalized, one world right. system. Yeah, right. because when you talk about business, right, what are we talking about? Money, right? finances, right? And so the way that the markets work, fundamentally, is you have liquidity moving in and out of the market, but there's liquidity that's provided by a central bank. And that central bank, you know, you have the Federal Reserve, you have the Bank of England, you have all these central banks all across the world that are providing liquidity for that money to trade on that platform in and out, right? But then at the same time, you also have this, this global conglomerate of huge mega million, billion dollar, trillion dollar corporations that are trading publicly on that marketplace that are also owned by the same banks that are providing that financial marketplace. So you have a, a system in which they're trading money with each other, right? And so what they're doing when they, the stock market crashes or it skyrockets, typically what you'll find is that not that, the, not that the event in and of itself was procured by the banks. In other words, it's not that they made this right. false flag, they didn't right. create this epidemic, but what they're going to do is they're going to use the hysteria that's created by this epidemic to hide their trading right. 
behind the news. They'll capitalize so, on Exactly. It. So they're going to capitalize on this whole thing with the volatility that's in everybody's mind right. and in all the stores. You got toilet paper that's coming off the shelves. You can't find you can't find processed dried foods. You can't find any of that stuff right now. Well, of course, then if the stock market then does crash in the midst of all that, then it's really not going to be a big surprise. Right. But the whole thing is that it's not organic. Right, because if right. you know how the markets work, then you understand that they just took advantage right. of the chaos. Right. And they just they just sold all their positions off right. at a premium and made profit. Right. And that right. drove price down. It goes back to the fact that the virus is not we're not saying that the virus is a conspiracy. Right. You know, I do believe there is a coronavirus, right. but there's a flu virus every year. And okay, maybe it is, you know, three times more like, you know, deadly or whatever. They were saying the flu is a one to one ratio of passing and the coronavirus is a one three. So for every one infected, it can pass to three. So it's highly contagious. But the fear that has overcome people is just it. There's no way to describe it. And I think um, if this really was a test, we failed as Americans. We literally rolled over. We're wanting now the government to write us stimulus checks. Yeah. I mean, it's like all of a sudden Bernie Sanders looks like the guy we want to be president. You know, <laughs> right. you're like, wait a minute. This, you know, but just one, not even a real worldwide crisis. I'm not saying it's not a real crisis, but it's not a worldwide crisis. Right. And look how quickly red blooded Americans, Republicans, are willing for big government. The same way I was surprised. When they voted for the Republicans ran the president, had the presidency in the House and all that during the time that the Patriot Act was was rolled out. That was the largest movement of government or growth of government ever. Right. And it was voted unanimously almost by the Republicans. And it'll be the same way again. Republicans are going to be in line for whatever, you know, President Trump's going to roll out. And it comes with a price tag. Yeah. And I, I was just thinking of that exact thing as you were speaking about it. I mean, when you think about what's going on, every time you have this whole election thing going, you have eight years of a Democrat that all the diehard right-wingers hate and everything. He, if he breathes, it's not right to breathe. And if he, you know, whatever he does is wrong. And then, then we get our guy in, you know, this right-wing conservative Republican, bless God, Trump, red, white, and blue. And he gets in. And, you know, we talk about how bad this is and that guy, the Democrats, they're socialists, they're all this and that. And then at the same time, we have a, tr a president now that's doing the exact same thing that the Socialist Party yeah. would have us to do. Uh, the exact same thing. And we're all like, yeah, leave Trump alone. He's trying to help us. And you say, well, well that's just happened in this instance. Well, then go back, like you said. It happens under every Republican president. The Republicans will not stand for some socialist democratic person. They complain the whole time one's in, then their guy gets in office and does a hundred times worse than that Democrat ever could do, and they're cheering him on the whole way. And I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders and, and Trump go have a sit at the bar together and high five each other because they're like, this is great. They're, they think you want to instill this, and I'm the one that's actually doing it, and it's good. It's just crazy. I don't know that I see them sitting together high-fiving, but I do think that... Because <laughs> I mean, you don't see them yeah. sitting together high-fiving because nobody does. I still think that you got two parties with two different views. I don't think they're that... I mean, I don't think they're that um, wise, I should say, maybe, or that smart to be able to fool us that long. I think they're genuine, but I think the same people pull the same their their strings. So right. whether it's Trump or Obama, the same people are manipulating Trump or Obama. And right. some of the problems I think we have that they hate Trump is because Trump's not manipulated. And I think even with the coronavirus, how late did he get on board? And I guarantee you, Trump is up. President Trump is saying things like, you know, this is not a big deal. But before the cameras, all of a sudden he has to make it look like a big deal because his presidency's on the line. You know, so now he's enacting all these things that yeah. exactly what the elite wanted. And, and right. as far as politics, you know, I always think about it's well, it says right here in First Timothy chapter six, but they that will be rich 
fall into temptation and a snare, yeah. into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in, in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And the Bible also says that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So when we talk about politicians, right, they're not all enlightened to the deepest inner workings of the New World Order. But I believe that many and most politicians are in love with money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would say and, for and, sure. And the same evil is on both sides of the party line. Right. It's the same evil that's working. It's the same prince of power of the air. It's the same yeah. devil that's at work. And so you're going to get a similar, similar result no matter which one you have in office because they both love money. Right. And, and, the, and the evil that's going to come from that is going to be the same evil. So like a recap. The coronavirus, it's, it's, a, it's an actual virus, but what is the government, what do we think, or just kind of guessing, speculating, what are the things that could be brought out or introduced because of it? Forced vaccinations, government takeover of healthcare, the stimulus package, you say the, the uh, currency, uh, what other things did we bring out for a recap? Anything else? Yeah, I think that covers everything that we talked about. Yeah. The one world government, where you got governments uniting. And so I just want to end with um, 2 Timothy. And this was my life verse when I was a teenager. Um, and chapter 2, verse 4 says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And the Bible says if you're going to war the right warfare, the good fight of faith, you can't get entangled with the affairs of this life. And so some of the speculation we did, you know, we made tonight, let's leave it at just that. It's speculation. All we're trying to figure out is who and how this book gets revealed, you know, gets, gets, uh, gets fulfilled. And so could this be? I don't know. I don't think it's the beginning of the end. I think it's a dry run for whatever may come. But nonetheless, don't, get, don't be sitting there watching the news and getting all, uh, you know, all – uh, stressed out and you know popping your stomach pills trying to calm your calm your your anxiety you know you could do just say hey wow the bible's right on track and this could be it yeah. but don't get entangled with the affairs of this life yeah. and that reminds me i said it's the last verse but you know the bible says for god hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and so let's kind of go forth just with the fact that hey no matter what the government tries to devise if it's not god's timing he can bring it to naught. Any final words? No, I think you hit the nail on the head. We gotta, we just gotta press forward. And to me, it's kind of exciting to see the things that are happening. To see, you know, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that are uh, standing courageous, even though there's a, a world of frenzy out there. It's just nice yeah. to see other Bible-believing Christians that are literally doing what they did three weeks ago today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just living their life, serving God, soul winning, going to church. Yeah. And they're, you know, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. So if we have a spirit of fear, who gave it to us? Yeah, good point. The, yeah. Devil. the only thing I would add to any of that, just listening to you, there's two scenarios that, that, that sadly most people will come out of this trusting and worshiping the government even more. Yeah. And trusting and confiding in the media even more so than they did before. That seems to be the trend and the pattern. But I'm excited for those that would get more into their Bible as a result of this. Mm -hmm. To see that the things in Scripture are actually coming to fruition yeah. before us. Right. And that causes me to search the Scripture. And so I would encourage that yeah. over, you know, getting more in bed with the media. Right. And in you know, enveloped mm -hmm. in that. And I think, uh, we'll, I'll close on that, I think a lot of the Christians out there who, you know, they reject Fox News at uh, election time, all of a sudden are watching Fox News. Yeah. And they're they're getting entangled. And they're sitting at home in fear of, for naught. And it reminds me of last Saturday, we went out soul winning in the coronavirus scare, right? We saw several, multiple people home because of the coronavirus. Right. We saw 32 people saved Amen. in one day. Yeah. 
So let's take let's take our our you know our um, armor of the Lord on, and let's take our sword of the Spirit, and let's not cower or get entangled. Let's just keep reading our Bibles and go do something great for God. Amen. That wraps Amen. it up. So we'll we'll keep it you know, posted if anything progresses. But we just wanted to create this as a as a way to just kind of share our thoughts, and uh, we're interested in what you think. God bless.